please welcome a funny man with a serious message, Dan Clark. always about change. It doesn't matter that your theme is taking care of business, the, the Randy Bachman, Andy Bachman family out of Vancouver. It doesn't matter what the theme is. Everybody always wants me to talk about change. How many of you are willing to change? How many of you are lying to me? How many of you are 40 years old? That's the perfect place to talk about change, our bodies. The second I hit 40, my body does whatever it wants to do. Can any of you relate? No matter how much I work out, I played football for 13 years. I've lost 41 pounds since I got through playing ball. I'm doing my best. But now I bend over to pull up my socks. I think, what else can I accomplish while I'm way down here? <laughs> Last night I flew in to town, obviously, here in, in, in Virginia Beach. I went to bed healthy, and I woke up injured. Does that ever happen to any of you? <laughs> you wake up, your hips asleep, your foot hurts. You're like, hey, 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 what's going on around here? It's called change, and because I'm always asked to talk about change, do you agree with my dissection? Do you agree that change from the outside in is reactive change and it creates pressure? Oh no, now what? Oh no, now the economy. Oh no, September 11th. Oh no, the interest rates. Oh no, the competition. Do you agree that change from the outside in is reactive change and it creates a victim mentality? What's a victim mentality? Any of you live with someone with a victim mentality? Any of you work with someone with a victim mentality? Victim mentality, they look outside, it's raining, and what do they say? What a horrible day. No, it's not. If you live in Los Angeles, California, and it rains, it actually is a good thing. It dissipates the smog. You can actually see what you're overpaying for. And yet, how many of us are that week that we allow something as silly, as, as, as simple as weather to change our attitude, to change our approach to business, to personal relationships, to life? Are we not all guilty, either positive or negative? Allowing weather to change us? Give me a break. I live by Snowbird Ski Resort in Utah. When it snows in Utah, we ski. Anybody here from the Midwest? Cool. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. When it snows in the Midwest, you fish. That's cool. Obviously, there's people here from the South. Yeah, absolutely. Last year, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, and Dallas, Texas. It snowed in all three of those southern cities. When it snows in the South, you crash your cars. <laughs> Anybody here from California? Oh, yeah. Uh, we love your country. It's an awesome country. I was in Malibu Beach when it snowed for the first time. No one had ever seen snow before. All the crazies were out on the sidewalk going. <laughs> they thought it was cocaine from God. They're like, whoa, dude, I believe. Wow, I'm going to save this. Buy me a new Porsche on the weekend. Change from the outside in is reactive change, and it creates pressure. So the flip side of that is why you're gathered here in your annual convention. Do you agree that change from the inside out is proactive change and it creates power? Yeah. And how does it create power? It creates power because we understand once and for all that no matter what our past has been, we have a spotless future. That one moment in time really does matter. That one moment in time really can change forever. That what we've been in the past does not make us who we are today. What we hope to become in the future makes us who we are today. Proof, I was on the program with Henry Winkler, the Fonzie from Happy Days. He's clearly one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my lifetime. He decides he wants to take some time off, treat himself to a matinee movie. So he slides in through the side exit door of the theater, and as he finds himself a vacant seat, Henry Winkler turns to sit down on the chair to look up at the movie screen. As he turns to look up into the, to the movie screen to sit down, the little girl sitting right behind him smiles this giant smile, points her finger and slowly says, Fonzie. Henry Winkler immediately snaps into the Fonzie character from Happy Days. Hey, whoa. And the lady sitting next to the little girl passes out. <laughs> Henry Winkler milks the moment. Whoa, I thought this only happened on TV drama. Yay, how cool is this? Whoa. Theater manager comes out, takes care of the woman's needs. She's lying in the aisle, cold pack on her forehead. She is asked one question. Why did you pass out? She said, my little girl is autistic. 
And that is the very first word she has ever spoken in her entire life. One moment in time changes everything. And because that is the truth, we must understand once and for all the secret to leadership is found within. Plato taught that all knowledge is recollection. Which means that when I stand on a stage and I say anything that hopefully could be profound and you nod your head in agreement, you're not learning anything new. You're recalling something that you already learned in a previous experience. Do you agree then from a leadership perspective that some things are true whether you believe them or not? That everybody's entitled to their own opinion but nobody's entitled to the wrong facts? That we shouldn't believe everything that we think, oh, what are we going to do in this recession? And you're proving the recession wrong? Isn't it important then from a leadership perspective that we start to massage this word change which seems so negative and perhaps introduce a high-bred word like stretch, negative, change. Oh, I have to change. What a drag. But stretch, we all like to stretch. Every single time I'm in the program, my desire is to challenge your belief system and challenge the status quo. And for way too long, we have been introduced to this concept, you've got to think outside the lines, you've got to think outside the box. What if the answers are still in the box? <laughs> Most people who come to meetings like this come to, in search of the new answers, when in reality, don't you think we ought to come in search of the right answers? And the right answers have always been right, or we can't call them right. Do you agree? So in order to change, we must not change at all. We must become more of who we already are, which is the epitome and definition of change. Just in that attitude alone, you stand out in the crowd. I'm so tired of flying around in these commercial jets because every time I get on, I'm immediately reminded of our mediocre society, minimum requirement. For those of you who flew here, did you really listen to the pre-flight safety demonstration that was put on by the flight attendants? If you did, we've got to have another talk. <laughs> when they stand up on every flight and say, this is how you put on a seatbelt, I'm thinking, if you have to have somebody tell you how to put on a seatbelt, you should not go out in public unsupervised. And then they start to lie to us in this minimum requirement. We are here for your safety. Bring your seat up to the most upright and uncomfortable pos position. This kills me. Alive. Dead. Alive. Dead. <laughs> alive. Dead. I survived a plane crash. Stanton, Virginia. Shenandoah Valley Airport. When you're going down, they're not here for our safety. You want a drink. When you're going down, you want to see a movie you've never seen before. And yet every time we get on, they always play the same video. It's the same pre-flight safety demonstration put on by the, by the flight attendant, is it not? The other day I'm on a plane, there's a little girl maybe five rows behind me. She's saying it along with the video. In the event of a decrease in cabin pressure, an oxygen mask will appear. Reach up, tug on. I'm like, wait, just once I want them to give me the microphone so I can tell them what it's really like. Ladies and gentlemen, in the event of a decrease in cabin pressure, there's going to be a little orange mask that falls from the ceiling and it's going to scare you to death. When you stop screaming, prepare yourself for a 400 feet per second vertical dive. And if you're traveling with more than one child, pick your favorite. Because you ain't got enough time to make any other decisions. What happens when we get on a flight and the flight attendant isn't thinking outside the lines? He or she isn't thinking outside the box. They're becoming more of who they already are. They know the answers are in the box. They're exceeding expectations. Do we recognize this inside-out stretch? Oh, yeah. I'm on Delta Airlines. We're coming into to Dallas, Texas. Huge turbulence. We're bouncing all over the sky. We finally land. <laughs> we bounce. We land. <laughs> we bounce. We land. <laughs> Tax into the gate. Flight attendant comes over the PA system. Hi. Welcome to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> if you enjoyed your flight, tell your friends you flew Delta Airlines. If you did not enjoy your flight, tell your friends you flew Southwest. <laughs> and then obviously she had a great relationship with leadership because she then says, and please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened while Captain Kangaroo bounces us the rest of the way to the gate. <laughs> That's funny. And is this inside-out stretch contagious? Oh, yeah. 
elderly woman walking right be, behind me in her, with, with her cane. <laughs> comes to the door, were you the pilot? Yes, ma'am. Did we really land or did we get shot down? 